hello everyone. Uh, this is David Simon from Crimson Dark. I'm out here to do another video tutorial working in Photoshop. Uh, in this case we're doing explosions. Uh, great big fire explosions in space. space. They're always fun. Uh, now to start with we need something to blow up. So I've got a scimitar fighter here which I've rendered earlier. Um, layer order is important. It's got a star field in the background and the spaceship is on top of that. Now the important thing to remember about explosions is that essentially they are just uh, quickly expanding clouds of gas, fiery gas, but it's gas, it's clouds. Uh, this is my collection here. Um, so I like to start with a nice big billowing cloud. It feels like a nice big uh, ball of gas. Now I just drag that into the document, I put it behind the scimitar, the fighter. The reason we're doing that is because we want this fighter to look uh, like it's being engulfed in flame, like the explosion is ripping right through it. Now if we just put the explosion on top of the image that's not going to look so re realistic. So essentially we're creating two explosions. We're going to have one that's behind the scimitar and then once we've done that we're going to have another that's in front of the scimitar. But those two together is going to look like this, this explosion is really tearing the ship apart. Now I've just resized it and I'm positioning it so that the uh, the center of the explosion is around the right place to be blasting the ship apart. Uh, now I just go through, s remove the, the sharp edges from the photo just with the eraser tool. Um, it's not perfect but we'll clean it up later. Uh, now we colorize. Uh, we want it to just be a very subtle shade of orangey yellow somewhere around there. Um, and that is just the base of the explosion. It, it's to get us started. Now what we need to do is we need to add some detail to it. So we grab, uh, we grab another cloud photo where we've got just lots of little various puffs and strands all over the place. Now we put that on top of the base. We resize again. Try and make sure that it covers up the entire blast. Again, we go around the edges, we just get rid of the uh, harsh lines so it feels more organic and smooth. Again, we colorize. Roughly the same settings. You want the, the color to be relatively subtle to begin with. And now, we set this layer to overlay. If we turn that off, you can see there's the base. And here's what the second layer is doing to it. But we want more detail. We want this to be a really interesting, uh, varied explosion. So we'll grab a, uh, that's another good little. I like the look of this one. Let's see how this goes. Same deal. Copy it across. Transform. Clean up the edges colorize and overlay. Yeah, I'm liking that. That's looking good. And I think just one more. This is good. Okay, there we go. That is the explosion that's behind. Now it's uh, still not quite right. I'm going to go to the base. Well, first of all, I'm going to just turn these layers off so you can see there's the base. We did that. Then we put that on top. And finally that. So you, you're building up the clouds on top of each other. Now I'm just going to adjust the levels of the base. Yes, yeah, so you get the edges look a bit interesting. It's not quite as bright as it used to be. I'm going to adjust the levels of each of these cloud layers, so we get some greater variation. Yeah, 
There we go. Now it's all a bit too even, so I just go to the base, get a really nice big fat airbrush, or well, eraser, and just clear away some areas. Um, again, so we've got just a bit of variety in there. Now, that is the first explosion. The second one we're going to be putting on top. So we want a different base this time, so it doesn't look too similar to the, the lower explosion. Um, I'm going to grab this one. I'm a big fan of this one. Same deal. We reshape it. It's going to be a bit smaller because we don't want it to obscure the entire thing. Smooth it off and colorize. There's our new base. Now we need some more interesting things to put on top of it. Ooh, that looks nice. Very nice. We'll see what this does. As you can see, there is a lot of experimentation. You just play around. Um, the more you do it, uh, you'll start to develop instincts for what's going to work and what's just going to look uh, ridiculous. Colorize. Set it to overlay. Now because I can't be bothered uh, bringing small clouds in, I'm just going to duplicate the layers, a couple of the layers that are beneath the scimitar and put them on top of uh, the new explosion. Now rotate them around a bit so it's a bit more varied. Make them a bit smaller so they're not having quite so much impact on the base explosion down below but only affecting the top explosion. Now let's go through, let's make this explosion at the top a little bit smaller. It's probably a bit too... it's a bit over the top at the moment so we'll just Get rid of this. We want to see some of this debris, some of this uh, damage that's being caused because it's the, the exp explosions are pretty, but it, it's the physical blast that really makes these things look like they're doing impact, like they're, they're physically powerful. And I'll probably just grab one more layer to put on top. just erase some edges so that the overlay isn't... you can see here the overlay is affecting the uh, scimitar, the fighter itself. So you just clear some of that up so it's not quite so obvious. So it can produce some interesting effects if you're doing that de deliberately. Now typically the explosion that's on top, um, I'll just make it slightly transparent, just oh so slightly, so that you can see a bit more of the structure of the fighter. And, yeah, this is looking all right. All we need to do now is just go through and uh, clean things up a bit. If you look at the stars, you'll see again that the overlay layers are uh, colouring the stars as well as the explosion. So I just need to go through and patch some of that up, get rid of some of those so the stars... so it's not so obvious. Incidentally, this can be a really uh, fun way of creating some nice nebula effects if you want to do this intentionally. Just reducing the lower explosion a little bit more. So we've got a bit more variety to it. And there you go. A really quick easy way to produce an explosion with really not that much effort involved. I uh, hope you find some of this useful. Um, have fun blowing things up. But, you know, not really. <laughs>